Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Scout Tactical Channel. Today a classic, the Smith & Wesson Model 5906 9mm handgun. First also, an apology to the old viewers who are faithful. I apologize, it's been three weeks since I did a Scout Tactical video. We have thrown a couple up on Scout Prepper, but I've had, uh, we've had some weird summer weather here in Texas. We had a week of heavy rain, the, rain, the range was all wet, and then uh, some heat, but I got a big string of uh, car burglary cases at the PD and I spent a whole week on them so I've gone three weeks with no scout tactical video which is unacceptable I apologize so tonight a classic the 5906 and why am I doing a blast from the past well it's summertime so a lot of people are thinking husband and wife concealed carry licenses and what have you and everybody comes up to me locally and they say what gun should I take my CHL test with what gun should my wife take her CHL test with? And this one comes to mind quite often. This is a 5906, and although it has been discontinued since 1999, there are a lot of them out there. They're very affordable, they're easy to shoot, and they're a great option. So I recommend this a lot of times to guys. Now, I like the polymer guns too. I have plenty of them. I have sold plenty of them. I know they're very popular, and there's nothing wrong with taking your test with one of them, but if you're on a bit of a budget, or you want something that's really easy to shoot because of the awesome weight that this comes with, maybe the 5906 or one of its variants would be a good one. So, a little history. Where did this gun come from? Okay, as you know, the world used to shoot revolvers for a long time. And then, what, 1985, 1986, Glock came on the market. They introduced polymer in the semi-autos. Before that, Smith & Wesson had already introduced semi-autos. Hope you guys know that. And, but they were metal. So when semi-auto, when the people started, especially police, started transitioning from revolver to semi-auto, they were metal guns. They weren't polymer in the beginning. And it wasn't this gun either. It was Smith & Wesson in a lot of cases, though other companies were obviously doing it, but Smith & Wesson had a big portion of the law enforcement market, and it was normally the model 39, 39. It was two numbers, not four. And the 39 was very popular. I don't have one to show you. I wish I did. They're very expensive. People want a lot of money for them, uh, $750 to $1,000 in most cases. But I guess just because they're so rare, but they were good little guns. Unfortunately, I have had a couple through my hunting store, but I've sold them over the years. So from there, you went to three digit Smith and Wessons, uh, like the 559, the 459 and stuff like that. That was gen two of the semi-auto metal Smiths. And then you went to the four digits. This is the uh, 5906, it's a nine millimeter, 5906. 06 being the variation with the decocker, the double single. There was a 4506, which I've had and sold regrettably. Uh, awesome gun, and it was in 45. There was a 4006, a 4006. Regrettably, sold those too. They were in 40 caliber. And when I say sold them, I mean bought them as a business, sold them as a business, but I should have kept one for myself. For years, part departments have been trading these in. And so my wholesalers have gotten uh, these guns in by a thousand at a time, and they sell pretty cheap to the dealers. And my brother and I used to take them by the truckload to the gun shows in the Dallas area and they were always popular. It was no problem to sell these things at a profit for $399, $425, $450 depending on what condition you bought them in and people loved them because they were a little less expensive than maybe some of your Glocks or M&Ps or things like that and they were still great shooting guns. So a good gun. A lot of guys do it as a truck gun, a home defense gun, a range gun, a learner or trainer gun whatever your purpose, an affordable, reliable gun from Smith & Wesson is always a good bet. So, the, as I said, the 06 was different variations. That was the decocker double single, which this one is. Uh, there was the 56 series, like the 4556, the 59, 50, uh, 5946, I think it was. And they were just uh, some single action, some double action only. You get the point. And there was, this one also has the mag disconnect, meaning that if the mag is out, won't fire. That was a law enforcement requirement back in the day. But there were variations that didn't do that, and they have different numbers. So from there, 1989 to 1999 on the 5900 series of pistols, we transitioned to this, didn't we? The, this is a Smith & Wesson 99, the SW99, which was a copy pretty much of the 
Walther P99 because they started importing them, then they started half naming them Walther, half naming them Smith, and then they were all Smith, and now they're back to Walther, and then Walther dropped them. So, kind of a weird history on these guns too, but this is where it went for Smith & Wesson into the polymer world, pretty much. We're leaving out the Sigma, which got sued by Glock and discontinued, but it was in there during that time. And then, of course, they transitioned to the modern day. Since, what, 06, 07, they've been rolling the M&P, which has become a phenomenal market-leading success and really uh, given Glock and some of the other companies a run for their money. So, on to the 5906, now that you know the history of where it comes from. This gun has a little weight. I'll tell you that right off the beginning. When you pick it up, you notice it's heavy. That's because it's made with stainless steel slides, stainless steel frame. There were variations like the Model 59, the original, in aluminum. And some of the three digits and four digit models. The 5903 and the 5904 were both aluminum. It is a matte stainless finish, so it's kind of a gray look. It's not bright and shiny, which is good for the tactical world. But it's a little heavy at 38.3 ounces. That's so say at the book. I didn't put it on the scale, but it's supposed to be 38 ounces with magazine. And that's pretty heavy. But how heavy is that really? Okay, this gun, the SW99, is 23 ounces. This gun, the M&P, is 24 ounces. This happens to be in 40, but you guys already know that it's the same dimensions in 9, just a different barrel. So, 38 ounces versus 24 ounces on a Glock, an XD, an M&P, etc. Okay, 50% more weight. But look at a full-size 1911, 5 inch. Full frame, what's it weigh? Oh, 43 ounces, 41 ounces, 46 ounces, depending on the accessories that you have on it. Yeah, so it's less than a 1911, and a 1911 is a coveted standard pistol in the market. So this isn't that heavy, but it is enough weight in nine millimeter to make it a dream to shoot. This gun is an absolute mild, tame pussycat on the range. If you want something easy for your daughter, your son, your wife, your nephew, what, whoever you're teaching to shoot, 5906 all day long because it's a nine millimeter, which is already a little easier to shoot than 40 or 45, a little, they're all pretty easy. But then the weight, 38 ounces, 50% more weight, my goodness, this thing you can shoot all day. You can shoot it one handed, no problem. So it's a four inch barrel, it's a four inch barrel, it's a four and a quarter inch barrel, so standard size. It has pretty standard sights. These were night sights that have died over the years. They only last about 10 years. So the night sights are dead on mine, no problem. It has a safety, which a lot of guns don't these days, but a lot of new shooters want. I don't use a safety, but I realize that other shooters do, and that's just fine. So how the safety works on this, with it up, that used to be a red dot right there, but of course it's also gone over time. But uh, you pull the trigger, let me try to show you in the camera. See the hammer moving, the hammer? Okay, so you just pull the trigger on this gun. It can shoot in double action, meaning the hammer goes back. I've already cleared it, but I'll show you. There you go, it's empty. So the hammer goes back in the fire mode and you shoot, or you go to single action, okay? This gun is neat, did you see what just happened? Let me do that again. Whoop. If it's cocked, and you don't want to shoot it, you can pull this down, and it's a decocker. Don't freak out and think, oh my God, the hammer just dropped, it would've shot the round. No, of course it wouldn't. You guys already know that it puts up a hammer block in there that prevents it from hitting the firing pin, so no problem, right? You pull this down, decocks the gun safely, and it's on safe. Nothing happens when you pull the trigger. See, no hammer movement. So the safety's pretty good. It completely disables the hammer and puts up a hammer block and works like a decocker if it's already cocked. So pretty cool. I'm sure a lot of that stemmed from law enforcement requirements back in 89 when they started developing this pistol, but that's how it works today. In the double action, in the single action, excuse me, with it already cocked back, it's a lot of take up compared to today's guns, but not heavy, and then it goes. So pretty cool, you know. In the double action, a ah, little heavy. It's about 11 pounds on my scale, so that's pretty heavy. But it's smooth. It's not a hard to pull trigger. 
even though it has a little weight to it. And again, I'm sure that 10 or 11 pound double action was a law enforcement thing back in the day. In nine millimeter, pretty good firepower. 15 if your state allows it. And the mags are pretty available, not from Smith & Wesson anymore. They don't sell them, but Metgar makes them and they make an excellent mag for a lot of different brands. Their mags are about $25. You can get them in 10 or 15 rounders. You can get them in blued or stainless. Now, why would you want a blued mag? Well, there was a variation of this, though not very common. In fact, very rare, the 5905, and it was blued. Also, the Model 39 was normally blued or black because some departments ordered it that way. And uh, there were other variations through the years in the three digit series too that were blued. Some had steel frames, some had aluminum frames. So you just kind of had to play with it. There were also some options for some huge adjustable sights on them. Uh, mine just has the regular old night sights, but there was a real big pronounced metal sight guard thing with some ears. And a lot of guys like that. That seemed to be uh, quite the feature. So the slide drop is simple. It's right here. It's a huge lever. It's easy to hit in anyone's hand. I'm pretty much, uh, I guess, a large size guy. I'm not super big or anything, but it is, uh, I'm, I'm six foot 225. So this gun fits in my hand just fine. My other hand would go over. It's a full size gun. It's a filling grip. The controls are reachable. There's my slide drop. There, and again, I rack it when it's empty, reloaded, I rack, but if you use your slide drop, there it is. And there's your safety, easily, again, workable with the thumb. Note, which I'm sure you already saw, it's ambi. So if you're a left-handed guy, the mag release, which is standard, is on the wrong side. I'm told a gunsmith can reverse that. I've never done it, but there it is. But the safety is ambi. That's pretty cool. So if you're having to shoot weak-handed, say you're injured or you're a lefty, there is a safety for you. It's pretty cool. I don't think that the mag, uh, the slide drop comes over, but maybe a gunsmith could do it. I don't know. I don't think that piece would work on the other side and it's not machined correctly. Let's talk about the grips for a quick second. These are the hard plastic Smith & Wesson grips. See mine say Smith & Wesson on there? These are not that common. They're pretty thin and they break. Guys would break them all the time on duty, so the legend goes. And Hogue makes a rubber overmold grip for that. I know some of you guys love those. I hate them. I can't stand those big, fat, bulky grips. I like Hogue's texture. I like the comfort of the grip when you shoot it. But I just can't stand a big, fat grip. Because I have, I guess, medium to a large hand in it. I just don't like something that's so huge you don't feel like you're holding on to it very good. So I'm glad mine came with the original Smith Thin grips on the grips it is a thick gun you should know that but it's not so much that no one can hold it mmp on the on the right on your right see the difference it's not big but you're right at an inch or so on this gun a little over and you're at about an inch and a third on this gun so it's definitely a little fatter and you can definitely tell it when you hold it and just in case you're curious that's the medium back strap on the mmp of course these are interchangeable that was not a part of the world in the 80s and 90s until you got to this gun, which had inter interchangeable backstraps. But this one, no, no interchangeable backstraps. So the mags are aluminum. They go in great. They drop free. The gun cycles and shoots like a dream. Anyone could shoot this gun. And I say that with a caveat because somebody has already messaged me. I said that in another review. Okay, not anyone could shoot the gun, but I'll say the majority of people can shoot the gun. You don't have to get silly in the comments and say, well, what if the person only had two fingers and all that stuff? I'm sorry, you're right. If the person had a huge disability, then they can't shoot any gun, that would not qualify. So that's what I have for you guys. Four inches. 7.5 inch overall gun, 38 ounces, so heavy but easy to shoot. A perfect learning gun, a perfect defense gun. A little heavy on the today's by today's standard on the concealed carry side, but of course, law enforcement carry this for forever, so it's totally doable. And uh, the price is right. Most guys, I'm in the Dallas market. I'm outside of Dallas, but it's uh, you know 350 to 450 depending on the gun you find and the condition. I've even seen some. Pretty scratched up ones where the front checkering was pretty bad uh, for 275 once. So look around, you might find you a deal. Or 
SW99 and MMP if you just can't bring yourself to do metal. But I say any gun guy has to have some of the classics in the gun collection. So you need to look into the old uh, Smith & Wesson metal semi-autos because they are definitely worth the money. Guys, I appreciate the views and the subscriptions. Keep them coming. Remember that Scout Tactical is a three-channel network, so it's Scout Tactical for the guns and gear, it's Scout Prepper on the emergency stuff, and it's Scout Hunter on some of the hunting, hunting videos and hunting guns. Check us out on the web at scouttactical.com, which also has the link to some of the survival gear we sell on eBay in the eBay store to support the project. Remember that Facebook is on its way back. Uh, they killed us because they said Scout Tactical wasn't a real person about a month or so ago and we lost our thousands and thousands of likes and, and uh, friends and all that stuff. So check us out on those Scout Tactical channel, Scout Prepper channel, and Scout Hunter channel on Facebook. And as always, thanks for watching.